Robinson in the secondary. When they go to the dime package, two linebackers and a defensive end will come out. Ryan Davis, James Jefferson, and Esby Glasgow will come in. The pass is incomplete, and a flag is down. Wayne Harper may have gotten there just a hair too soon. Eric Martin, the intended receiver. Wayne Harper seemed to be draped all over Eric Martin. Every time you protest too much, it usually means that you're guilty, and Harper certainly protesting on that one. Eric Holding, number 29 on the defense, five-yard penalty, first down. Eric Martin is a tough guy to defense. Here you see Dwayne Harper. You can't see that left arm, but that's the one that got in there a little bit too early. Official was right there on the call. So the Saints have the first first down of the ball game at their own 49-yard line. No score. We're just underway in the Superdome. And Hilliard is dropped after a yard at the 50. And it was Cortez Kennedy that got it. You know, Rufus Porter, who was also in on that tackle, he uh, is from the Louisiana area, and he got about 40 people here. His father, who has not seen him play since high school, is here at the game. He said his father doesn't care anything about football. He's a baseball man, so he had to get a time up and bring him to the game today. He also said he was going from player to player to get some tickets. He had to buy 15. He said he had about 50 friends here, and I said, how come you only bought 15? He said, I didn't tell him my home number. <laughs> Second down and nine. Bear pass is complete, 30, 25, 20. Gil Finnerty into the end zone. Touchdown, save. is reviewing the touchdown. You know, so let's take a look at the play that they're now reviewing. I don't know what they could be reviewing. Bobby Abair told us yesterday he was so confident that a quarterback's job is to make quick and rational decisions. You see, he picked the right receiver out. Finity, man to man over there on Terry Wooden. That was the per place that the ball should have been thrown. And Finity doing a fine job getting into the end zone. No question about it. Finity's career first receiving end zone. Right for a touchdown as he got in the end zone. They were checking to see if the knee was down before the ball broke the plane. So we'll take another look. The play stands as ruled. It is a touchdown. Anderson to add the point after, and he does. And the reaction of the quarterback who was booed when he was introduced. We are back with the reaction of the quarterback, Bobby Bear and Ahmad, you said uh, at the beginning of the telecast that all he has to do is put some points on the board, and that would quiet all of the uh, all of the critics. I think so. I think a lot of the people are upset about Bear but not playing last year. But if they think back, the times that he's played here, he's been so successful, so that if he comes out, throws a couple of touchdown passes, they'll forget everything, and they'll start thinking about the way the Saints played two years ago. Anderson kicking off. It is taken at the goal line by Derek Lavelle. And he is hit right at the 20-yard line. Reggie Jones is the man who made the tackle, a 20-yard return. Back to the story of Bobby Bear. He owes the Saints fans a public apology and another sign. Says Abear, that's the small sign. Oh, here it is. 
Look at that, Isabel. The Cajun cannon back and loaded. Seattle with the ball at their own 20 yard line, first down. Greg comes out throwing pressure for the backside. He is hit. They are going to call it it. He ruled an incomplete pass. An incomplete pass. Referee Bernie Kukar is calling it an incomplete pass. David Craig here back trying to throw this flat pass. Now just as he gets it, it looked like an incomplete pass. He was the, the arm was going forward. Here's another look at it. We see Craig set his feet. And just as he draws back, you'll see Pat Swilling there just knocked the ball away. He eventually scooped it up and ran into the end zone, but they called it an incomplete pass and more booze from this crowd. And it will be second down and 10 Seattle. Now it will be reviewed. Chuck Knox said, no, the, the arm had started forward. So as long as Chuck has that Seahawk jacket on and not a striped shirt, <laughs> his opinion doesn't count. Another look, you see Craig's arm. That's right on the edge. Right on the edge. But it's got to be clearly the other way for them to overturn it. Overturn an official score. I think that's too close. He seems set his feet. The ball's back. Now here it comes forward. And the official, that is the referee, Bertie Kukar, called it an incomplete pass immediately. One of the things that this Seattle Seahawks team does not want to do is get too far behind this. New Orleans Saints team because we have yet to see Ironhead Hayward <laughs> take over here. Another look. And I'm convinced after three looks that that was uh, an incomplete pass. It is right on the edge, so you have to go with the official call on the field. Is it indisputable? That is in super slow motion. No, in super slow motion, he was moving forward. They have two minutes to make a decision. We, of course, can make ours in at least half the time. <laughs> Slept not. Did you put a clock on this, by the way, to, uh, I, to I see didn't, if Because we got to be close to the two-minute mark. I didn't think that it would take two minutes to make this decision. I didn't either. Some of the decisions that have been made by the league, I mean, they've made them a little bit too soon. While we have this break in the action, here is a program note on next week. That is uh, George Sladkey, the replay official. Notre Dame Saturday. We start our Notre Dame football. Indiana against Notre Dame Saturday at 1 o'clock. And uh, we will find out probably more during the day today on the situation of uh, quarterback Rick Meyer, whether or not he will be uh, starting and playing next week. One of the things about that Notre Dame team, they lose 13 starters off of last year, and still all the national polls rate them in the top six, seven teams in the country. That's depth. The play was reviewed. It was determined to be a fumble. However, the whistle blew. Wait, he said Seattle's ball. Seattle's ball at the 10-yard line is what he says. I think what he means is that it is New Orleans' ball at the 10-yard line. It was ruled a fumble. We'll go back and look at the whole play. He said it's Seattle's ball. There you see David Craig. No, so he has trip. blown the whistle now is what happened. He blew the whistle at that point when Seattle still had possession. Because he was ruling it an incomplete pass, and he blew the whistle to stop any contact. So it I wasn't he, the Seahawks ball at the tail. I thought he said he ruled it a fumble. It is a fumble, but he said he had blown the whistle on the field, and that, as you know, overrules everything. Well, then he made a mistake. That's correct. But Which, not in his mind, because he ruled it an incomplete pass, then blew the whistle. And so... With the overrule of making it a fumble, then the ball is at the 10 where it was at the time he blew the whistle. So it is second down and 20, the ball at the 10 yard line. And the Saints defense rising up to stop Derek Fenner. Ricky Jackson makes the tackle. 
and thus far the New Orleans defense has completely shut down the offense of Seattle. They certainly have, and on the strength of their defensive linebackers, even though they're playing without Don Johnson, the big playmen so far have been Ricky Jackson, Pat Swilling. They certainly control that line of scrimmage, and a lot of people say that this is the best linebacking core in the National Football League. And all of their linebackers have been to the Pro Bowl at least twice. Four wide receivers for Seattle, third down and 20. Craig throws, and it is intercepted. Troy Cook with the interception. David Craig trying to find an open receiver. You see he has a lot of time, but once he lets it go, it's sort of put up for grabs. He's looking for Paul Scanzi, but he finds Toy Cook instead. And Toy Cook playing with a bruised thigh, able to play center field on that play and come up with the interception. Hilliard is the remaining back. It's a first down on the Seattle 19-yard line. And Hilliard has a couple of yards. That's going to be off. And now the pushing and shoving starts at the 9.27 mark. Time remaining first quarter. That pushing and shoving always gets the fans all excited. Down there, it's pretty much a joke. <laughs> it's very hard to hurt anybody in any kind of a fight with all that stuff on and it'll be second down. The ball on the 18 yard line. Saints completely dominating the first six minutes of the ball game. Hillier, the remaining back. Play action. Knocked away. Excellent defensive play by Tony Wood. Maybe the spark that Seattle needs. Had he not, had he not knocked that ball down, that was a, a reception by Greg Scales, who was a bootleg, just a naked bootleg. He got Scales open out in the flat, and Woods able to elevate and knock the ball away. Had he not, it could have been a touchdown because Scales was wide open. The fake to Hilliard. Hilliard had to pick up Jacob Green, and as he saw the replay, Jacob just spun him away. Third down and nine from the shotgun. Four wide receivers for the Saints. Pressure from the backside. Fumble. Saints have it for a moment, and then they say they do recover. Eric Hayes is the man who recovers the fumble. The turnovers are all even at one apiece. Rufus Porter just shot out of those blocks like Carl Lewis on that play. No one could block him. Made the hit on Bear. Watch, watch how quickly Rufus Porter ends up in the backfield. Right now, here he comes off that corner and makes a great play. Glasgow had a shot at the recovery. Hayes got it. Seattle first down. Their own 18-yard line trailing in the ball game, seven to nothing. With just over eight and a half to go in the first period, and Derek Finner is the carry. He's got two to the 20, and it'll be second down and eight. Brett Maxey and Jim Wilkes make the tackle. You know the Seahawks want to run the ball against. The New Orleans Saints, but they may have trouble. I think they're going to have to go to the air because these linebackers in the front three of the New Orleans Saints are definitely controlling that line of scrimmage. Brian Blaze comes wide to the near side. Tommy Kane wide to the far side. Gunner and Williams are the running back. This better by the locking of John L. Williams. And just a couple of yards, it'll be third down. Pat Swilling makes the tackle. Now let's check in on the other games going on. The early games today, the 10-minute tinker, Atlanta, Kansas City, no score. Green Bay with a field goal up early on Philadelphia. 
Dallas leading Cleveland 3 nothing, and no score between Tampa Bay and the New York Jets. And here it is the Saints seven and the Seahawks does it. Seven twenty left to go first period. Third and seven four wide receivers for Seattle three on the near side. Craig throws to Brian Blades has it at the 34 yard line that will be the first first down of the ball game for the Seattle Seahawks a gain of 13 on the play and the pushing and shoving and some extracurricular exchanges continue. But Seattle has a first down at their own 34 yard line. Brian Blades one of the better wide receivers in the National Football League runs a nice route here. He finds himself right inside the zone and he just settles down there. He doesn't run right through it creating a great target for David Craig who lays it right in there. Now this is where it's one against about 13. <laughs> they, they, they play once every four years. I'm not sure why there's so much kind of bad blood between the two teams. Well, one of them remembered if you ever come back here four years from now. <laughs> John L. Williams, the remaining back, play action fake. Craig will scramble and slides at the 37-yard line. He'll pick up three. It'll be second down and seven. Sam Mills was there to cover it. And David Craig made the right decision there because it was between him and Sam Mills, and that is a mismatch on the part of Sam Mills. Here he it looks like a lot of room to run there, but all of a sudden you see number 51, Sam Mills, who is a kid dynamite if I've ever seen one. You take that decision to slide. Mills is 5'9", 225 pounds, twice an all-pro linebacker. And not an ounce of fat on him. With that size 5 down, he's one of those guys that can hit you without even bending over. Second and seven. Craig's pass is complete at the 49-yard line. This time it is Tommy Kane on the receiving end. Toy Cook, who had the interception. Is the man who made the tackle gain of 12. Tommy Kane is a big play receiver. He uh, runs an excellent route here, just a turnaround route, turns the defensive back around, then watch him come back to the ball. Excellent play. That's the way you got to run those kind of routes. Turn around and come back to the ball. They're going to spot it just outside the 48. Last year's statistics for Tommy Kane. First down, Seattle. Saints lead it 7 0. A 50 yard touchdown pass from A Bear to Finnerty on their opening drive. And here is Derek Finner. A couple of yards to the 50. It'll be second down and eight. Sam Mills makes the tackle. You really do see the strength of that New Orleans Saints linebacker core. They just, you know, where it looks like there's going to be a hole, all of a sudden those guys come up and feel right away. And there's so much pride in that group. They've all been to the Pro Bowl. They, they feel like they're the best linebacking group in the NFL. What is the effect of missing Vaughn Johnson? He's out with a cap tear. There he is on the sideline. He's replaced by James Williams. What happens is when James Williams comes in, he actually plays better because of the three people around him. He plays up to their level. Second and eight. Spin move to the 47 yard line. He picks up three. It'll be third down and five. Jim Wilkes with the tackle. These Seahawks, the only success that they're able to have is, is through the air. It's just very hard to run on this, this Saint defense. You, know, you got four guys that have been to the Pro Bowl. That leaves only seven other guys in the team. That really is a strong defense. Seahawks going with four wide receivers. Kane, Scancy, Clark, and Blake. From the shotgun. Four-man rush by New Orleans. The ball is loose. It is a fumble and scramble for Seattle recovers. The Saints had a couple of shots at it. And a Seahawk got it. This is one of the problems that the Seahawks have had in the past, David Craig, inability to hold on to the ball. The sack is one thing. They actually dodged a bullet by being able to fall on that fumble. Craig looking, trying to find somebody downfield. 
And all of a sudden, Wayne Martin is on him, knocks the ball loose. And the Saints with a couple of chances to get the ball, but not able to hang on to it. Edwin Bailey is the man who recovered it. Here's the kick. And the return by Vince Buck. So the Saints will have the ball. And we have a timeout. New Orleans leads it seven to nothing. And the shots that you see on the Mississippi, of course, past history, some fabulous steamboat races up and down the Mississippi. And here we have a race between the Saints and the Seahawks. And the Saints are leading it now seven nothing. And they have the ball first down at their own 36-yard line. Hebert opens with a little play action, goes deep over the middle to Trenner, the tight end. And a big first down to the Seattle 43-yard line. A gain of 21 yards before Eugene Robinson makes the tackle. Bobby Abair makes such good choices in this offense. You can tell that he really knows the offense. He finds Brenner wide open over the middle. I mean, one of the toughest things for a quarterback besides delivering the ball is deciding who to throw the ball to. And when you find a quarterback throwing it to a wide open receiver, you know that he's making the right decision, putting the ball in the hands of the right guy. Hebert hey this time hands on to Craig Ironhead Hayward. And this year, uh, this week, of course, there's been a lot of controversy in New Orleans over the choice of Steve Walsh or Bobby Hebert as the starting quarterback. Jim Mora told us yesterday that the head coach it was strictly a gut feeling. The Times Picune had a poll over the decision. Was it a correct decision? 24% said yes. In other words, 24% for Abair, 76% for Steve Walsh. But right now, if you were to take the poll here, you could reverse it. And, and more importantly, I think that uh, Coach Mora was one of those 24% people. <laughs> yeah, he had the vote that counted. <laughs> Second down and seven. And Abair's had a great game and on target again at the 36 yard line. Gain of four. It'll be third down and three. David Wyman was there for the Seahawks. Hilliard pulled it in. Hilliard, number 21, the running back and sometime receiver for the Saints, wears gloves, and not very many running backs wear gloves. Here he is. You know, gloves, I look at this guy wearing gloves, and I, I think about it. When you wear gloves, you feel tough. You, anytime you're doing anything, you put the people that wear driving gloves drive faster. I do. I do. Yes, <laughs> You know that. <laughs> you, you've driven with me. <laughs> Something about like those gloves that make you aggressive, and if it works, then wear some. You do. You are. You're tougher. Remember as a kid, <laughs> you always put the gloves on for a fight. You hope that somebody break it up before it got started. Flags are down. The pass is incomplete at the 30-yard line. As Bear got all kinds of pressure from the Saints defense. Finnerty, the intended receiver, and so the officials now will sort this one out. Jacob Green right on top of Abair. Possibly because the Saints were offside. They got an early start. That'll be a first down with a penalty. It was third down and three. Offside on the defense, number 97. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. That's Rufus Porter. Rufus, he just dropped down. I think that Rufus, when he dropped down, dropped into the neutral zone. End of the first quarter. We'll be back in a moment. This is Charlie Jones, Ahmad Rashad. We're at the Superdome, where as we start the second quarter, the Saints are leading the Seahawks by a score of 7 to nothing. Saints have the ball, and that score not indicative of how the Saints control the first period. Of not at all. They have a chance to really be up about 21 to zip at this point. But that's the thing that this offense does. It's a ball control offense. And every now and then, when you think they're going to be conservative, Hebert goes up top. Dalton Hilliard is decked at the 29. So he will have a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Time of possession in the first quarter. Seattle. Nine and a half minutes, New Orleans five and a half, but New Orleans certainly capitalized on the time that they had, and the Saints have been a possession ball club. Notice they were first in the NFL in 1989, averaging 33 minutes and 43 seconds, dropped to 14th last year. That's exactly. Bear was playing in 1989, and that was one of their better seasons. And plus, when you look at that time of possession, I, 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 would, I would guess that it's always cap capitalized by Morton Anderson coming in and kicking a field goal. 
hard to win if you don't have the ball. Second and nine, and it is incomplete. A misread by one of the receivers because Hebert thought he was going to cut inside with the coverage, and Eric Martin read it to go outside. What happens in that case? What you want to do there is one of the receivers, the inside receiver, should bring it more towards the post to give the outside receiver more room. You see two receivers right in the same area, and what happens is the outside defender can fall off and make a pick an interception. Hebert there a little upset that he misread that thing. Somebody misread it. Third down and nine. I'm a bit surprised you're not going with a long field goal attempt. Let's see if they will on fourth. Buying a little more yardage. He has running room. Now he throws it. He was simply avoiding the lock. And that's a borderline call in that case because he had he'd already gone out of the pocket. And in reality, he was just dumping the ball. I'm surprised he's not called for that. Yeah, once you run out of the pocket, and here's the reason he ran out of the pocket. Rufus Porter was hot on his trail from that side. Rufus Porter, one of the more exciting players around. He made the Pro Bowl a couple of times as a special teams player. And now he's the Pro Bowl linebacker. And now here's Morton Anderson with a 47-yard field goal attempt. Speaking of the Pro Bowl. Anticipated, you talked about it. When you've got Morton Anderson there waiting on it, you can do it. 10 0 Saints. 13 59, time remaining in the first half. Seahawks trailing by a score of 10 0. This week, this is part of the news that we uh, we had here in New Orleans Hank Williams visiting the Saints. <laughs> but, it, but it wasn't. Hank Williams. <laughs> you know, the strangest thing about that whole thing now, Hank Williams, he's a good singer and all that, but who would want to look like <laughs> Hank Williams? <laughs> <laughs> it was an imposter. Here's Chris Warren on the kickoff return for Seattle. Still on his feet at the 40 and then out of bounds. Chris Warren finally stopped by Vince Buck after a 41-yard kickoff return we'll take another look am I Chris Warren has a lot of speed got a lot of playing time during the preseason because of Derek Finner not being around and you see him break to the outside now you'll see that speed and coming up you'll see some of that power he breaks a couple of tackles keeps his feet and continues on down the sideline before he's lambasted out of bounds <laughs> finally but Chris Warren the fine running back also and he gives Seattle their best field position of the ball game to start a drive now from their own 42. Here's a screen. Left side, it is intercepted. The Saints will score again. Pat Bully. to nothing. The statistics of Dave Craig, two completions, five attempts, 24 yards, no touchdown, two interceptions. Two big interceptions, and that last, both of them, pretty much thrown up for grabs. At the five-yard line, Chris Warren. This time he returns to the 15. He'll have 10 yards on the return. Benny Thompson makes the tackle. Let's go back to the interception. David Craig here trying to set up a screen pass with John L. Williams. 
John L. Williams not out far enough, and Craig throws the ball. That's just like playing catch. Swilling makes this catch. Actually, it's like playing catch and then playing catch up because Craig tries to catch up with Swilling, which he cannot do as he runs back a 39-yarder for a touchdown. Pat Swilling scoring his first NFL touchdown. We talked to him yesterday. Our comment, he doesn't look like a linebacker. He is lean and mean, but does not look like a linebacker. Sure. But he certainly moves like one. Certainly a thoroughbred. And Charlie, he was so full of enthusiasm and confidence yesterday. Now we see why. Craig this time to John L. Williams right side. Slips the tackle, and he goes down about at the 20-yard line. So he'll pick up five. It'll be second down and five as Gene Atkins wrote him out. And so now the Seahawks down by the jersey number of Dave Craig, 17 to nothing, have to regroup. What do you do in this situation? You have to not try to get a bunch back in there. You still got to settle down and try to run your offense. The first thing that you want to do is try to come back and throw a bomb or try to get right back into the game. But you've got to settle down, forget about the score, and try to do the things that you do best. And at this point, the things they do best is throw interceptions, so you don't want to do that. Second and five. Craig has pressure, throws far side. This is Derek Finner. And Finner will pick up the first down. And this is a different Dave Craig than we saw yesterday when we visited with him. He was full of confidence, laughing, having a lot of fun. Even went out, and as you know, when he came back, Brian Blaze was going to come up and talk to us. Didn't have time to say, Craig says, I'll be Brian Blaze. So what would you ask him? I said, well, tell me about your quarterback. He said, our quarterback is great. He's going to have a great year. And he was laughing, and I thought with more confidence than I'd ever seen him. Yet. But he said, uh, he's struggling in the first half, no question. Well, you know, it goes back to if you were watching our pregame show where Bill Paul Sells was talking about, hey, we need you today, not yesterday. So as confident as he was yesterday, that has no bearing over how he's doing today. This is a now game, a now sport, and you're only good as you can do right away. Andy Heck missing the snap count and pulling, and that'll cost a quick penalty. All stars number 66 on the offense. So it'll be first and 15. Watch the right side of the screen. He was pulling. Oh, that, yeah, and nobody goes with you. Yeah, when, the, when the snap counts on four, you go on one. <laughs> that's, that's a little obvious. You want to go on three and a half. First and 15. Craig throws back to John L. Williams. It's a tackle. First down. He's to the 50. And out of bounds at the four, just inside the New Orleans 42-yard line. James Williams finally got to him, but not before he picked up 35 yards. John L. Williams may be the best receiving running back coming out of the backfield in the league. He's covered there and still able to make the catch and then run away from some tackles. John L. Williams with excellent speed in the open field. And he's got that great body lane that he's always going forward, always going forward. And you see David Craig trying to rally his team, get them together. And he has something to celebrate that game to the 42 of New Orleans. Three wide receivers for Seattle. Craig throwing to Travis McNeil, the tight end. A little swing to the right side, and he is out at the 33, so he picks up nine. It'll be second down and one. James Williams got it. Seahawks working on James Williams on that last play, who was playing for Vaughn Johnson, but I think that the way that you, you have to work on these strong linebackers you got to make them run side to side don't let them line up and come straight at you at a running attack you got to make these guys cover somebody down the field in order to be successful against them second one do you go for the first down or do you go to the end zone i think you go for the first down you you know they're behind by 17 points they need little short positive things and here's a short positive first down to the 29 yard line Derek Penner does it robert goff makes the tackle there's such a emotional change when you go for it. even if it's second and short and you try and you're behind by 70 points you try to throw the ball into the end zone and you don't catch it the emotional thing starts to die a little bit but if you can just take a little two yard off tackle and you're still doing positive things and everybody can start getting together on the same level does that make any sense yes it does, <laughs> yes, it does. 
That's exactly what they were doing. You look for the small positive things. You're building the foundation for a comeback if you can do it. You say it so well, Charlie. Craig is running out of time. There was four seconds on the play clock, so he will take a timeout. Stopping the clock with 10.02 left to go. First half. Saints lead it 17 to nothing. This is Charlie Jones, Ahmad Rashad. A look at the Superdome. Now, of course, as you know, the Seahawks play in the Kingdom, but the fans here are just as knowledgeable. They want to raid over the Kingdom as the fans in the Great Northwest. And it could be the crowd noise when they're not expecting it inside a dome that may be confusing the Seahawks just a bit. I think more than that, it's the Saints defense. Here is Kane. Tommy has it and has the first down. An ex excellent job by Dave Craig biding time to let Kane get open and then being able to deliver the ball because he was under a lot of pressure. You see Craig looking downfield trying to find Kane, but here comes the pressure from the inside. He pumps once and just gets the ball away before he is blasted by Ricky Jackson from the back. That's just all a part of playing quarterback. You notice he's still looking downfield. Didn't even bother him. And a gain of 15, first down. Didn't bother him today. Tomorrow it will bother him. It's been helmet on helmet at the 10-yard line by Vince Buck, a gain of four. It is second down and six. And so, at least for the moment, the Seahawks have stepped away from their running attack and going exclusively through the air against the defense of the Saints. Yeah, I mentioned earlier, they just were having no success at all trying to run the ball on this strong New Orleans Saints defense. And this is the, the only thing that they can do or can get anything positive is try to throw the ball. That last formation, they had Tommy Kane line up in the backfield, which means that a linebacker would have to try to cover him. Bill Hitchcock has replaced Ronnie Lee at right tackle. Ronnie Lee with a full quad very early in the game. Check it down and six. Craig scrambles. He's throwing this away, and it's going to be caught for a touchdown. He was putting it where only his receiver could get to it, but in reality, he was out of time. Certainly was. He was looking for Tommy Kane, and Kane was covered, and then as he ran out of the pocket, he saw Brian Blades in the back end of the end zone, and it was a perfect throw, Charlie. Just like you say, he threw it that only one guy could either catch it or it's incomplete, and Brian Blades comes up with the catch for the touchdown. And so Seattle in nine plays, they move 85 yards, their only drive of the ball game, and they can now cut the margin to 10 with the extra point attempt by Casey, and he's got it. The score, St. 17, Seahawks 7, back in a row. And here is a look at Brian Blades. With one glove, he's got the Michael Jackson action there. And the kickoff by Casey. Here is Quinn early on the return to the 15. Gets to the outside, the 20, the 30. And finally, it was John Casey, the rookie kicker, who took him out of bounds. A flag back at the 36-yard line as the Seahawks were offsides on the kickoff. The Seahawks, who, had, who have been so good on special teams in the past, have been struggling. Offside on the kicking team, penalty refused. Have been struggling with their special teams all summer. Rusty Tillman, one of the finest special team coaches in the league, very upset. Probably not as upset as Chuck Knox, because they're usually a lot better on special teams. That's been their forte. Saints have a first down at their own 37-yard line. Hilliard is the remaining back. They open this set with three wide receivers. And Abraham comes out throwing. Dumps it off to Hilliard right side. A little delay screen. And he goes to the 50-yard line. 13 and a first down before Robinson got it. Now let's go back to that touchdown and the key block that set it up. The key block was Derek Finner. You see him here. He's going to make a block on James Williams, number 90, to enable David Craig a chance to get this ball off. Watch this block right here. 
Nice block. Craig still able to point downfield, put blades where he wants to, and deliver the ball. In result, touchdown. Saints lead it 17 to 7. The ball at the 50 yard line. Play action fake. Everybody wants to go deep. He does over the middle. Tight end, John Tice. The brother of Mike Tice, the tight end for Seattle Robinson again with the tackle. A gain of 21 yards. And the St. Juggernaut is rolling again. Charlie, I, I like watching this Bobby Abair play. He is always in control. And I mentioned earlier, he reminded me a lot of Roman Gabriel. I mentioned that to Archie Manning, who's here doing the radio for the New Orleans Saints. He, he, he reminds me of, of Roman Gabriel also. He stands in the pocket. He's a big, strong guy, and he makes such good decisions. He's a winner. And, and with him, statistics don't count. He realizes his job is to win football games. the tackle let's check in with a 10-minute ticker four early games Atlanta now leading Kansas City 3-0 Philadelphia leading Green Bay 3-0 Dallas out in front of Cleveland by a score of 13-7 the Jets by one over Tampa Bay 7-6 and here the Saints lead by 10 as New Orleans 17 and Seattle 7 Jim Moore with a headset on the head coach of the Saints. He's 56 years old. Looks a lot younger than that. Yeah, well, this is just the first game of the season. Let's take a shot at him about December. Eric Martin. And he is out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Patrick Hunter. Got to him. Another first down. Eric Martin is a big tight end type receiver that can run downfield. And he's an excellent possession receiver. Very hard to cover. Likes to run a lot of underneath routes. Has excellent hands. You always see him reach out and make his catches. And he's very hard to cover. He gets on those small defensive backs. And even though he is covered, he's able to just, it's almost like getting a rebound in basketball. He's still able to come up with the grab. And Eric Martin, 58 straight game with the reception. Saints now with three tight ends in the set. And Hilliard to the outside. Brought down about the seven yard line. Hilliard, who came off knee, a knee injury last year, he tore up his posterior cruciate. It's a ligament that you can't really replace. And it's a 50 50 chance if they go in and try to make that uh, sort of operation. So he didn't get the operation, he just did rehab all year. And he's now just getting used to the feeling in that right knee. He appears to, to be almost back to normal. As you saw, Tony Woods is injured on the play. We have an injury timeout. The ball is at the seven yard line. It'll be second down and five. And be sure to stay with us following our telecast today, the final day of the World Track and Field Championships and the two highlight events, the men's high jump and the men's four by 100. So stay with us on NBC this afternoon. Another Olympic showcase, of course, leading us all the way to Barcelona next summer. I wonder if Carl Lewis will give football a try when his track career is over. He'll still probably be able to run about a, oh, I don't know, 9-9. Nine, nine. I'm not sure he wants to take a salary cut and go into professional football. By the time he's finished, <laughs> the salaries will be up there about the way it is now for him. I, I threw a couple passes to him before. He's got good hands. He can catch. But most people in the park can catch. Can you take a hit? <laughs> Carrier. We talked to, to Ironhead yesterday, 5'11, 280 pounds. I love the story he told us as a kid. He said, I asked him, where'd you get the nickname? He said, well, as a kid, you know, you start you start a fight, he said, they put their hands up, I just ram them with my head. <laughs> he is a low 285 pounds. He's about a biscuit away from being 300. <laughs> but he is a fine football player, perfect lead blocker. He's another one of those guys that run over you without bending over. 
Third down. And Hebert is going to be sacked by Jacob Drew. All-time sack leader for the Seahawks. Jacob Green may be a little undersized, but he is so quick. Here you see him putting pressure on Avery. He comes right down the line and makes the play. He is a leader on this football team. He's one of the plan B free agents and had a chance to go to Houston, but said that, you know, he loved this Seahawks team so much and Chuck Knox that he'd rather play there for less money. Jacob Green has scored four touchdowns, defensive touchdowns, of course, in his career. One was here in 1988 against the Seahawks. Anderson with his second three-pointer of the ball game. He had earlier from 47, and the Saints continue to lead now 20 to 7. Today's NFL headlines, Bill Parcells stated that San Diego quarterback John Freeze is not ready for the starting job, but he's the only one they got. Will McDonough, the Falcons' number one pick. Bruce Pickens will sign within 48 hours. That's what Will says. And he also says the Broncos are looking to trade holdout running back Bobby Humphrey. Warren will down it in the end zone. The Seahawks will start at their own 20 yard line. And of course, be with us at halftime. Bill Walsh and Bill Parcells will preview the 49ers giant Monday night clash and they'll have all the scores and highlights from the other four games that are the early ball games along with this one that has been dominated by the Saints. The Saints you got to know when you're playing this team they're going to put some points up on the board. They're either going to put seven or three they're guaranteed to put three if they get inside the well with Morton Anderson if they get inside the 50. Derek Finner and John L. Williams are the setback. Craig opens going deep to Blades. It is incomplete. Frank Warren was right on top of David Craig before number 73. Now you just see him. He's got a little spin. Spins out on Edwin Bailey and right in Craig's face. He's a welcome addition to this football team after being suspended. He was out last year on a uh, substance abuse suspension. It was cocaine. We talked to him about it yesterday. He is so happy to be back and so pleased to have this opportunity. I'm sure when your chances get slim and you realize what it's all about, I think it really, you turn the page and hopefully he's done that. Pass is complete to Lewis Clark. They're going to mark it to the 32-yard line where Brett Maxey stops him. Tell you just how happy that Frank Warren is to be back. He enjoyed training camp. And you, <laughs> so you know he's got to be happy to enjoy training camp. That's exactly right. I, when he said that, I almost fell off my chair. That's something I never enjoyed, training camp. You had this great expression <laughs> on your face like, you've got to be kidding me. That had to be a joke. He said he was here at the beginning of training camp, but it was so hot, and by the time he caught up with the team in Wisconsin, it was very cool, and he realized that he was back playing football, that it was just the most joyous time of his life. First down, Seattle. And is incomplete. Stretching out for it was Finner. Vince Buck was stretching out for a possible interception, and it'll be second and ten. You can tell that this New Orleans defense is still playing well because Seattle is still not throwing on rhythm. Everything that they're doing is off rhythm. They've got to try to get the ball away real quick. Uh, uh, still putting a lot of pressure on Dave Craig. Watch Dave set up. And he's not really throwing that ball in rhythm. And it's almost intercepted. Second and 10 from the shotgun. New Orleans leads it 20 to 7. And we have 229 left to go in the first half. Going very quickly. As he goes to Brian Blaze, Reggie Jones with the tackle and a quick 12 at a first down. Brian Blaze with an excellent pickup of that blitz. Anytime you get a blitz, the receiver's routes all change. Anytime there's a blitz, it's always just a, a, a slant pattern. You'll watch number 39, Brett Maxey. Here he comes on the blitz. Now here comes Blaze coming down over the middle. That's an automatic. No matter what the pattern is, it goes away on a blitz. Two-minute warning will now be given to both benches. The score, Saints 20, and the Seahawks 7 back in a moment. Okay. Tom 
convinced that, of course, too, that you just saw, as you know, the owner, he loves to dance after victory. That there was a question of whether or not he would be fined because of that celebration. And then the, the attorney general in Louisiana wrote to the commissioner, and according to, to today's paper, this is what the commissioner tagged him. He said, we have no rule prohibiting such dances, while Tom is no MC Hammer. His dances do have redeeming virtues, real or imagined. He can dance to his heart's content in New Orleans. You, you know, if in fact that did come from the commissioner, that says a lot about our commissioner. He's he's pretty hip if he knows who <laughs> MC Hammer is, but I guarantee you that's his daughter's influence. He doesn't know who MC Hammer is. <laughs> that was in a day's time speaking. We have been trying to confirm that quote with the league office. We haven't been able to find the commissioner. He's probably out dancing this afternoon. <laughs> but, but it's still a good story, so we had to use it. We never, we never let the facts get in the way of a good story. <laughs> Craig, with pressure, drops it off underneath to John L., and he goes to the 49-yard line. Brett Maxey makes the tackle, and now the hurry-up offense after the gain of five. It'll be second down and five. Tom Benson shouldn't be fine for his attempt at dancing. What he should do is practice a little more. This is Blades, who is down at the 44. Buck right over his back. And a first down. Last word on Tom Benson and his dancing. I enjoy it. I like to see the man get out there and enjoy himself. I do too. Craig really drills this one at the 41. He goes to Lewis Clark, who had a defender all over him. Sam Mills makes the tackle. Clark is still moving. It's at the 40. Second and six. Shotgun, far side. First down, out of bounds. Good move by Paul Scamsey. Maxey was there. Seattle looking good in the hurry of offense. Perhaps they should use it earlier in the quarter. I remember that. Anytime you're good in that two-minute offense and you have people running all over, over everywhere and you're successful at it, people always say, well, geez, why don't they do that the whole game? Ah, but Buffalo does do it the whole ball game. Houston sometimes does it most of the ball Well, game. see, now they have players that are in shape and can do it the whole game. I, when I was playing, they'd say, why don't they do it the whole game? I used to say, no, please don't do it the entire game. But you just get used to a faster rhythm, isn't that correct? And you get better in, in your shape, you count on being ready for it. You turn it around and you put all the pressure on the defense rather than the other way around. Greg throws, swing right side. That's Tommy Kane. And Kane stops the clock as he goes out. 46 seconds left. Toy Cook was there for the Saints. Let's check now our 10 minute ticker. Atlanta leading Kansas City 3 0. Philadelphia up. 10 nothing. McMahon now the quarterback. Cunningham is out of the ball game with an injury. Dallas leading Cleveland 13-7. And the Jets over Tampa Bay 10-6. And Marv Albert at halftime will have further details on the injury to Randall Cunningham of the Eagles. First down at the 20. 46 seconds left in the first half. The 15 yard line is Brian Blake. Seattle will stop the clock using one of their timeouts. It, it's one of the strangest things in football is that the prevent defense never works. I've never seen a prevent defense. Well, they, they sometimes can prevent you from winning, but every time they push all those defenses back in there, it seems like the other team goes right down the field. And it will be second down and four at the 14 yard line of the same. Tom Catlin, the defensive coordinator of the Seattle Seahawks, as uh, many of you know, uh, had a heart attack and then a, a mini heart attack, and then while they were checking him and running some tests, and he had a full-blown one and had that bypass surgery. Chance to visit with him yesterday, take a little look at the, the scar. He looks on the sideline of the Seahawks a lot like he has, uh, looks like a little like Santa Claus with that beard. We'll show you a shot of him a little bit later. Yeah. Started his coaching career in 1960 with the Dallas Texans. And there he is, the old AFL, a former All-America at the University of Oklahoma. And he looks good. Lost a little weight. Does he feel fine? Second down. Blade 
Jones. He will fumble the ball and scramble for it. And the Saints have it. Craig trying to find Brian Blades cruising across the middle makes the catch but he is really Vincent Glenn there Woo. by Vincent Glenn he knocks the ball out and once again this New Orleans team dodging a bullet and you see David Craig going up there trying to console Brian Blades because this is no time to really get down I mean you got still got another half of football and they need Brian Blades if they hope to get back into this game. Saints will be content now just to run out the clock. Let's take another look. At the end of that play, it becomes, it cannot be overruled once he's had the snap of the next play. But I was just curious as to the amount of possession that he had of the ball before he was hit by Vincey Glenn. And look, it appeared that he had it for a couple of beats. You'll see Craig firing the ball over now. He's got it. One, one two. two. Down, yes. Head possession down. And he is hit, and the ball comes loose. And Vince Buck recovers the fumble. And the Saints take the countdown to the end of the first half. A disappointing first half for Chuck Knox, the head coach of the Seahawks. An outstanding first half for Jim Moore, the head coach of the New Orleans Saints. Saints lead it 20 to 7 here in the Superdome in New Orleans. And we'll be back with the second half. But right now, let's go to New York City. And here's Marv Albert. Marv? All right, Charlie. And we welcome you back to our NFL Live studio. Marv Albert with Will McDonough and Bill Parcells. Now, the big story... On week one, the knee injury suffered by last year's NFL Most Valuable Player, the Eagles' Randall Cunningham. We'll get to that in, in just a moment. First, a look at the scoreboard at the Superdome in New Orleans. Bobby Hebert, a holdout all of last season, was booed when he first took the field, but led by Hebert in the second quarter. Uh, New Orleans with a 20-7 lead. Hebert's first regular season pass since 89, completed to Gil Fennerty for a 50-yard touchdown. And then in the second quarter, watch Dave Craig float one up, and it's picked off by Pat Swilling, and he goes 39 yards for the score. So New Orleans with a 20-7 lead on Seattle at uh, halftime. Elsewhere at Arrowhead in Kansas City in the second quarter, Atlanta in front of KC, 3-0. Bill, I recall that was your upset special of the day. Well, I like the way Atlanta's defense is playing. They're disrupting the running game of Kansas City. A lot of minus plays created by Atlanta in the first half. Kansas City's going to have to get it going. Albert Lewis did have a couple of uh, first-half interceptions. Philadelphia and Green Bay in the second quarter. The Eagles with a 13-0 lead in Green Bay. And the big story there, uh, Cunningham uh, helped off the field. Sprained left knee. They say ligaments took a hit from linebacker Bryce uh, Pop. Uh, Cunningham is out. We don't have further word on the severity of the injury, but Jim McMahon has taken over. Now, what happens to the Eagles uh, without Randall Cunningham? Uh, Mar, I think more than any other player in the league, the loss of Cunningham affects the Eagles. The whole methodology of scoring around him, I just don't think they can do much without him. And Jim McMahon is now inserted as number one. He did throw a touchdown pass. The irony of that, Mob, is about three weeks ago, Randall Cunningham was critical of Jim McMahon. Said he didn't like it when they brought McMahon onto the team a year ago. Didn't like it when McMahon came in from in the playoffs. Thought Don McPherson, the old Syracuse quarterback, should be the backup. Not only Mc, uh, McPherson's already gone to Canada. He's playing up there. He's not even on the team. And now McMahon got to come in and bail him out not only today, but probably for the next three or four weeks. And this is a game that also has seen Eagles tight end Keith Jackson and Green Bay nose tackle Matt Brock ejected for fighting. They're in the second quarter. The Eagles over Green Bay 
13-0 Cunningham sideline by a knee injury. In the second quarter at Cleveland, Dallas in front of Bill Belichick's Cleveland Browns by the score of 20-7, Troy Aikman throwing for two uh, touchdowns. And in the second quarter, the Jets in front of Tampa Bay by the score of 10-6 at uh, Giants Stadium. Freeman McNeil, a one-yard run, couple of field goals by Christie and Pat Leahy, a 30-yard field goal. Now, when we return, we'll be joined by Bill Walsh as we focus on tomorrow night's Giants 49ers game at the Meadowlands. First, these words from your local station. And it's such a pleasure to come once again to the city of New Orleans. Big series for the Seahawks. First offensive opportunity, second half. Great field position, started at the Saints 25. Craig has pressure, he is hit as he throws it and is incomplete. He was going to John L. Williams, Ricky Jackson put the pressure on him. Ricky Jackson told me yesterday that he was good for a couple of sacks today and he was close to getting one right here. You see Craig looking to his left and here comes Ricky Jackson bearing down on that right side and gets the arm, gets his hand on Craig's throwing arm just enough to deflect that pass and keep it from being completed. And that is Bill Hitchcock who is trying to hold him off. He is the right tackle now as you place Ronnie Lee who is out with that four quad that happened very early in the first quarter. Ricky Jackson's nickname is City Champ. Three wide receivers for the Seahawks. And it is intercepted the drop. Sam Mills could not hold on to it. Could have been the crusher for the Seahawks. There is a reason that these kind of players play defense because their forte is hitting. They're not catching because that ball certainly should have been caught. And Craig, happy that it was intercepted and very upset that it was a bad throw. And it's third down. And two. Linebacker, it's very hard to catch when you get all that stuff on your hands. They got, they got some funny kind of gloves on, non-catching gloves. Hitting gloves. Hitting gloves. Tough That's gloves. Right. Tough, Tough gloves. gloves. Third and ten. Blades has it. Touchdown, Seattle. 25 yards, and Brian Blades with his second touchdown of the day. Brian Blades a little upset because he fumbled the ball just before the end of the half. Makes up for it here with a nice post route, and watch him go up for this ball with his hands. Nice little great catch there by Brian Blades. And Seattle needed seven badly to try to get back into this football game. Three points would have done nothing for him. And that was at a third down in 10 situation, 25 yards in the drive, three plays on the clock. It took them only 15 seconds. High snap, Kemp pulls it down. Jeff Kemp, who is only got it down just in time for John Casey. The score now, the Saints 20, the Seahawks 14. Craig's reaction, we'll be back for the kickoff. another look the snap from Grant Fiesel is high and Jeff Kemp who has been made the holder Craig had been holding some and boy this is a great save for an extra point and one of the things that, that Kemp is going through is holding from the other side he's been used to holding from the from the opposite side for a right footed kicker now you have to change all your mechanics instead of holding the ball down with your left hand now you're holding down with your right hand so he did a fine job that's a horrible job holding for a kicker because the only thing you can do is screw up <laughs> of course, the changing of the guards as far as the kickers are concerned for Seattle as John Casey replaces the great Norm Johnson who's been there for nine years, 810 points. And he'll be he'll be playing somewhere else. He's a good one. Here's the kickoff. Went early on the return. And he re returns to about the 22-yard line, 17 yards on the pickup. Chris Warren with the stop. Now let's check in with the 10-minute ticker and the other four ball games that are going on. Atlanta continues to lead Kansas City 3-0. Philadelphia on top of Green Bay at the half, 13-0. Dallas by six over Cleveland in the third. 
and the Jets reign over Tampa Bay 10 6 and they're in the third. They're in the third. Oh, they're really playing fast. Just like uh, just like us. <laughs> yeah, just just like the last time that Seattle had the ball offensively, it was so important. It's also important here for the Saints to get off good offensively to try to get that momentum back. Kelly is the ball carrier. And he has three to the 25. It'll be second down and seven. Eric Hayes and David Wyman make the tackle. Eric Hayes, number 78, during the starting assignment, a defensive left tackle that is next to Jacob Green. We asked Jacob yesterday, you know, the difference in having a youngster next to you rather than a, a veteran like Joe Nash. He said, well, before I could always ask Joe Nash if I forgot something. He said, now I have to make sure I remember my assignment and also Hayes in case he asked me. You get some people in the line that play together over a long time. It's like almost being on a basketball team that they all know what the other person is going to do. Now they got some youngsters in there. Makes it a little different. Pass is complete over the middle. Wesley Carroll on the receiving end. Wooden with the stop. Talking about Eric Hayes. He is a big basketball fan. You see he wears Michael Jordan's Air Jordans. He said when he wears them, they're called ground haze. <laughs> <laughs> He was a point guard in high school, a 260-pound point guard. And if he was driving for the basket, they'd let him go. Everybody got out of the way. <laughs> he, would he make the uh, the Olympic team in the United States? Maybe he, as could as drive, he could drive the paint, as they say. As a, well, Charles Barkley's <laughs> probably about that size, but he shoots a little better. Play action on third and one and going deep into double coverage, and it is intercepted. Dwayne Harper picks it off. Back to the 40, to the 50. And again, that was third down and one play action. And the Boo Birds are out again. They're booing Bobby Hebert when it, it really wasn't. One of the things that this New Orleans Saints team does not have is any speed at wide receiver. On a play like this, Hebert throws the ball out there and tries to let the receiver run under it, but the receiver has not enough legs to get to it. Fine interception, but, boy, there are a lot of fast receivers in this league that would love to run under one of those balls. And again, that was a gamble on third down and one. You could say it is just as good as a punt, but with that kind of return off the interception, you had better coverage with a punt. Craig throws. And this is complete at the 26-yard line is where he got it. Blades pulls it down. And Toy Cook, number 41, makes the tackle. And you have worked with Toy Cook's father. Toy Cook's father is one of the fine cameramen in the television business. Does entertainment tonight. All the shows on the Paramount lot. Toy shaking up on that play. We'll take an injury timeout. We'll be back. In just a moment, Saints lead it 20 to 14. And eerie updates. A cornfield behind my house is the number one landing site for UFOs in the Northern Hemisphere. We got pictures. Erie, Indiana. Joy Cook being helped to his feet. It looked for the replays. We'll show him to you. We were taking a look at it. Just got the wind knocked down. I mean, he took a, a great hit right here. I said that it's easy to play catch, but can you catch like this? That is an excellent reception by Brian Blades as he's hammered just as he catches the ball. It's a three-man collision there, and it looks to me as if Toy Cook got the blunt of it, but it's very hard to catch a ball in traffic like that. That's a mark of a big-time professional receiver. Seattle fumbles the ball. Finner diving for it and recovers it at the 25. It goes as a gain of one. It'll be second down and nine. They're working on Cook on the sideline. We'll try to have a report for you. That doesn't smell well oh. very good. But it does get your attention. It does. I used to do those things when it was hot outside. I'd put that thing by my nose kind of wake me up a little bit. Things make you wake up fighting. <laughs> Greg taking a lot of time. 
John L. Right up the middle. He goes to the 19. He's got six. It'll be third down and three. Wayne Martin with the tackle. Let's check in with a 10 minute ticker. Kansas City now leading Atlanta for the first time, 7 3 in the third. It is still halftime Philadelphia Green Bay 13 nothing Eagles. Dallas 20 Cleveland 14 in the third and the Jets still lead Tampa Bay in the third 10 6 and here the Saints 20 and the Seahawks 14. Third and three four wide receivers. Scantsy's in motion. Knocked away. Good defensive play by Reggie Jones. Blades the intended receiver, and Craig was going to him all the way. Well, they went to the well one time too many there. Excellent coverage. You see Blades at the top of your screen with a little break-in route, and there is really, that's great coverage. That's just great coverage. There. There's just no separation between the defensive back and the receiver. And Jones able to get his hand in there and knock that ball away. John Casey with Jeff Kemp holding. Grant Beasel the snapper. A 36-yard field goal attempt. Fourth round draft choice for the Seahawks. And he's got it from 36 yards out. The Seahawks creeping up on the Saints. We'll step away for a moment. This is Charlie Jones of Mod Rashad. 829 left in the third. You see the score of the Saints margin now has been cut to three. This is the silver season for the Saints, their 25th anniversary. And it all started right here with John Gilliam's 94-yard kickoff return against the Rams. This was on September the 17th, 1967. Opening kickoff, first game for the Saints. And that was the highlight for this team for about the next 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> that, of course, was at Tulane Stadium. The Saints coming to town, the building of the Superdome, and the rest is history. Boys want to see. <laughs> Casey to kick off early and more for the return. And here's Bobby Moore. And he returns to the 29-yard line where Casey, the man who kicked off, was right there with the tackle. The Saints had, uh, did, Ahmad, you were talking about it, a really rough start, but the top five NFL clubs from 1986 through last season, San Francisco Giants, Chicago Washington, the Saints with a 46-33 record, ranked fifth in the NFL. I think that's probably one of the most surprising statistics that any football fan in this country could look at because you don't think of them. You talk about the top five teams. I don't think that New Orleans comes up in, in any conversation. No, nope, but they are right there at number five. They certainly are. Hebert comes out, greeted by Boo, signs them by going to the touchdown scoring penalty. And he takes them out near the 39-yard line. Should be shy by about half a yard of the first down. Robert Blackman with the tackle. Penalty. Coming from the left side, just a little underneath drag pattern, wide open. Ball put right to him, makes the catch, and makes a nice little run afterwards. No, Finity's, Finity, excuse me, my voice is going up. Finity's taken a lot of abuse in the preseason. He had three fumbles. He had only four all of last year in 119 attempts. He's got on him a fumble spinner. There's been a song that this jockey has been playing it. He's played well, scored the opening touchdown. And it's one of those things that not how many times you fumble, but when you fumble. Those four fumbles, I think a couple of times lost in the football game. They did come in crucial time. Finity holds on to it here. Jeff Bryant with the tackle and the Saints have a first down. I'm a I'm a big fan of things like when you talk about statistics, it's not that's not percentages. That's not so important. It's, it's when you do those things. Joel Hilgenberg, the starting center for the Saints, is shaken up on the play. You played with uh, his uncle, right? Played with his uncle. I remember Joel and his brother hanging around two little kids, and now they're two big kids. And his brother plays center for his father was a center for Iowa his brother's a center for Chicago and he's a center here he said it's the only family that plays catch not facing each other <laughs> that's a terrible line but I love it <laughs> hey let's go in the back and play a little snap <laughs> right side bottom of the screen number 61 
There you go, John. Whirled up on his ankle a little bit. And that's exactly what they're looking at his ankle. I always wonder what makes an offensive lineman. Where is the joy of playing a sport when you never get to touch the ball? Of course, center, you get to touch it every time, but to be a guard or a tackle all your life, you, know, you can play 20 years and never touch the ball. What they like is they like to knock people down. That's, that's interesting. What do you do for a living? I knock people down. A lot of fun. <laughs> well, it's like asking us, what do we, we talk to them. <laughs> oh, yes, good. And they pay you for that. No, not really. Here's a program note. Notre Dame football has been, a, as you know, an integral part of the college football scene in American society since the 20s. NBC Sports will be there. We'll be covering Notre Dame, Indiana and Notre Dame, next Saturday at 1 o'clock, and you're going to be there, and you're going to be hosting. I will be hosting along with Gail Gardner, the Notre Dame pregame show, and we are, I, I love college football. It's so exciting, and to have a chance to be a part of a, to watch games that Notre Dame is playing in is really some. I think that's in, in terms of college football. I don't know if and there's any, any team that has the history that they have. And they have some interesting decisions on the quarterback, Rick Meyer, and a little uh, confrontation that he had yesterday, and we'll be watching that this week as that is sorted out by the Notre Dame officials. And right now, Bobby Hebert is sorting out the defense of the Seahawks. He hits his tight end, Hobie Brenner, and uh, tippers are flaring again. Well, uh, you, you know the tempers don't flare too much when you see a 160-pound official separate the two people. That's like, let me at him, let me at him, hold me back, hold me back. Brenner couldn't come down with it on the far side. It's always strange to me to see an official with all his muscle mass be able to separate a couple of big old strong football players as we see. <laughs> oh, Eric Hayes with a little... <laughs> pushing, then he gets pushed from the back. A lot of pushing going on out there. Still, you're the ball carrier. Wyman with the tackle. The ball will be spotted at the 50-yard line. Goes for a gain of one on the play. It'll be third down and nine. So we have the feeling here that a lot of these people are waiting for a bear to be unsuccessful a bear from the shotgun just dumps it off and there is nobody there he was looking for finity behind the short screen and finity never turned around and the ball would have missed him anyway by about four yards Boom. What happens on a play like that? Why that big in miscommunication? Well, one of those things, there's no spot that you're really supposed to be on a screen pad. You're just supposed to find the empty area. You'll watch Hayberry. He's got to hold the ball quite a long time, let the rush go by him, and then sort of just jump, dump it over. Now, Finity, the ball, you see, you can't see, you can't see your receiver. You just kind of throw it out in an area where you hope he's going to be. And it's fourth down and nine. Barnhart to kick. Warren is set for the return. Fair catch is called for. It bounces back from the two-yard line. Will be down at around the nine or the ten. And there is a flag back at the 50-yard line. On the far side of the field. A 39-yard kick, but it was absolutely perfect. But an ineligible man downfield for the Saints. I'm sure the Seahawks will let him kick again. One of the surprises for me was the first man down on that punt was Ironhead. At all 285 pounds, he was the first one down. It's kind of funny when we talked to Coach Moore the other day about his how fast his team was. He said, well, you know, we never time anybody. <laughs> that sort of helps you mentally because in your mind, you're thinking you're going about a 4-3. In actuality, you could be about 4-8. Number 34, the kicking team. And the reason that Ironhead was down, he got an early start. Well, I knew there was a reason why that big fellow was down there. You look on the right hand side of your screen, Ironhead releasing just a little bit early. And there he is, <laughs> he right down the hash mark. 
And only, of course, as you know, the two outside men can go down until the ball has been kept. With him coming down in your face, that's enough to have you put a fair catch. All right, here's the rerun. Barnard to kick. And Warren, the return man. It's another good one. This one is taken at the 10. To the 20. And then out of bounds and pulled down. yards of the kick and a 16 yard return and he took out a portion of that New Orleans Saints bench and one of the players who was just on the sideline is still down Gene Atkins was the man who brought him down and once they get once that's the reason they have big a five wide. yard face mask penalty on number 28 on the defense and that's one of the reasons you got that big white mark around the sideline so you know that you're there well, the coaches always tell you, protect yourself to the end. And you watch at the end of this play, as the Seals guys standing around, boy, they get bowled over. Watch you guys on the Saints sideline. There's the face mask right there. And, and look out. 74. And that is Kevin Haverdink, the starting left tackle, who was taken up on the sideline when he simply got caught in the melee. Seattle from their own 30. Blades, does he stay in bounds? Yes. Brian Blades is a class receiver. Excellent break off the cut here. Watch him come back to the ball and then watch him work with the feet. This is just good workmanship here. There's the catch. One foot down. There's the other one. Drags both of them just to make sure. It's an excellent pitch and catch by Craig and Blades on that play. They're going to review it, but you saw it, so you know that it's going to be. After further review, the play stands is called. <laughs> that did not take long. Did not take long to review. Also, good news for the Saints, you saw that Toy Cook, who was shaken up a little while back, back in the ballgame for New Orleans. He had the coverage, a gain of 18 to 48. Seahawks have the first down. Seattle trailing by three. Just over five minutes to go in the third. Eric Pinner has a yard to the 49. It'll be second down and nine. We're moving on the five minute mark, time remaining. We're in the third quarter. We're at the Superdome. We start the NFL season. Seattle and New Orleans, and New Orleans got out in front 17 to nothing. And they completely dominated the early going of the ball game, but the second half has belonged to Seattle. They pull within three. 20 to 17 the score on Charlie Jones along with a moderate shot. Glad that you could be with us this afternoon at second down and nine. Let's pressure up the middle, dumped off to John L. And he's he'll save a couple of yards to the New Orleans 49. It'll be third and seven. Swilling makes the tackle. Let's check in on the other ball games. Kansas City continues to lead Atlanta. The Eagles still over Green Bay. McMahon now the quarterback. Cunningham was injured in the first half of that ball game. Dallas by six over Cleveland in the third. Jets lead Tampa Bay by four, and they have moved to the fourth quarter. And here it is New Orleans 20 and Seattle 17. Reminiscent of the crowd at the Kingdom when the opposition has the ball. Flags are down. Kane has the reception. It'll be good enough for a first down. If it stands up, Cook with a tackle, but we had the, the markers in the play. 76 on the offense prior to the snap. So Bill Hitchcock. Bill Hitchcock playing for the injured Ronnie Lee, who is the tough leader on this offensive line. Hitchcock, the crazy thing about him, as big as he was, he was a hockey player when he was in high school. Third down and 11.
Greg's pass is complete. John L. stretches out. And I think he's got the first down by about half a yard. Sam Mills had him in the ground. John L. Williams knowing exactly where he was on the field in terms of trying to get that first down. Able to make the catch, turn around, and run it for the first down. He needed 11. He got 11 and a foot. A lot of receivers. One of the things is the coach is always telling you, know where you are. Know where that first down marker is. John L. Williams, fine catch here. Now watch him just make this move on Sam Mills and then dive forward for the first down. The ball spotted at the Saints 42. First down. Saints lead it 20 to 17. Two and a half minutes. Time remaining. We're in the third. This is a swing defender. He loses it. Knocks it away. Fourth turnover, two interceptions, two fumble recoveries. Derek Fenner trying to make something happen gets his ball slapped out of his hands and he can't recovered here so he slaps it again it is picked up by the New Orleans Saints and that will take the wind out of that Seattle Seahawks offense Gene Atkins is the man who recovered it first down Bill Finnerty the ball carrier on the sideline, remember when uh, Kevin Haverdeek was just sitting down and, and everybody rolled into him? Well, he has been replaced in that offensive line by Richard Cooper of the Saints. And Haverdeek, they're sitting up very slowly. So you got to watch yourself at all times, even on the sideline. It's dangerous anywhere near that football field, especially on the sideline if you're not paying attention. Second and six. Flag is down. They'll stop the play. 142. That is the time remaining. Ball and the guard, third. Number 60 on the offense prior to the snap. Five yard penalty. That's on Kennard. You're looking at 71 Richard Cooper, who is in replacing Haverding. So it is Cooper, Dombrowski, Hilgenberg, Kennard, and Brock. And tell me that Kennard is at 310 is the only player on New Orleans team that consistently outweighs Ironhead 285. That Brad Leggett has replaced Hilgenberg at center. So changes in that offensive line for the Saints. Second down, Hebert is sacked at the 25. Jacob Green got him. That's his second of the ball game. Jacob Green so extremely quick. He's been in the league a long time, hasn't lost anything. If you watch him on the top of your screen, he just runs around the outside and just keeps coming. He keeps coming. He doesn't stop. And able to sack a bear. Cooper was the man trying to block him. Unsuccessfully. Third and 19. Cooper, of course, the man we talked about a moment ago who has replaced the injured Haberding. the Saints with another false start. Ball start, number 71 on the offense prior to the And start. that's on Cooper, so he's having his problem. Well, anytime you get a guy that hasn't played a lot and comes in and playing against a guy like Jacob, Jacob Green. This time he's across from Rufus Porter. Well, that, that makes him even more nervous because you've got twice the quickness in front of him now. But Jacob Green, the play before, just took advantage of him. Third and 24. It is intercepted off of the tip. Brian Davis. Touchdown. Seattle leads for the first time.
Davis, here's a man that wasn't assured a spot on this football team until the last preseason game. He was in a battle, made the team, and came up with a lot of big plays during the preseason. And here's another one. This ball is tipped by the receiver, and Brian Davis still playing the ball, makes an excellent catch. And here, watch him go for that goal line. Rather than try to make any move inside, he just dives and just gets inside the flag for the touchdown. Once again, this is where you just got to put it down and head flat away for that goal line. Brian Davis, another big play. They're going to review it to make sure that he was in the end zone or that the ball breaks the plane. And that's what the officials will go for. We'll take another look. As you know that by now, of course, the replay officials see only the same thing that you see at home on the replay. And Hebert trying to keep him from getting in the end zone. After further review, the play stands. Down right there. It is, it is a touchdown. Good call by the officials. And also by Chuck Knox, who had his arms up also. And John Casey will attempt the point after. He's got it. And Seattle struggling from being down 17 to nothing have now taken the lead in the reaction of Hebert who threw the interception. And now let's go to New York City and an update. Here's Mark. All right, Charlie, earlier we told you that Eagles quarterback Randall Cunningham suffered torn ligaments in his left knee. The latest word, he will return to Philadelphia tonight. He will undergo an MRI examination as soon as possible. If he did, in fact, suffer ligament damage, it would mean surgery, and that would mean he would be out for the season. With Jim McMahon, quarterback, the Eagles in front of Green Bay by the score of 13-0 in the third. Back to Charlie and Ahmad. That could be a major yes. blow for the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, this guy is, is their entire offense. And I tell you, the turnaround of the Seattle Seahawks is a major blow to the New Orleans Saints. The Saints led 17 to nothing, and that was with 13 and a half minutes to go in the first half. Now, since then, they have been held only to the 31-yard field goal. That was at the 326 mark in the second quarter, and the Seattle Seahawks have clawed their way back and taken the lead. This, once the season starts, it's a 60-minute football game, and, you know, at one point, it, it appeared that the Seahawks were out of it. If you're a novice looking at the NFL, but anything can happen. Here is early on the return from the two-yard line, wins to the 15. Nice inside-out move up the sideline, and then bumped out by John Casey. Now, here's the reception of the quarterback, Bobby Aber. He got booze a moment ago when he came in. Let's see his reception now. The boos are louder. Your official Boo Burtograph? That's right. Boo Burtograph, it was uh, a little bit higher. It's on about a seven or eight that time on six the previous time. You saw Steve Walsh on the sideline. They will not replace Bear. They're going with Bear. There's not a controversy. He has been selected. And I guarantee you the Bulls will not affect his play. Nor the decision of the head coach. First and ten. Coming back underneath. Floyd Turner as the reception as we come to the end of the third quarter we have three in the book we have one to go back after these messages from your local station welcome back to the superdome in new orleans i'm charlie jones along with ahmad rashad as we open the fourth quarter a turnaround of a ball game dominated early by the saints dominated in the second half by the seahawks Brian Davis coming up with that excellent interception and running back for a touchdown. He, you know, he's a cornerback from Nebraska. He reminds me of another little cornerback from Nebraska who you've probably forgotten about. Pat Fisher. Pat Fisher. Gil Finnerty picks up the first down, and there's a flag on the play. Jeff Bryant with the tackle. Joe Nash was near where the flag was dropped. Possibly he was the Seahawk who was held. 
the Saints have done nothing offensively. It's almost like they're playing, Holding trying to... Number 62 on the offense. And yard gently repeats the down. Almost as, as if they're trying to sit on a lead. When they had that 17-point lead, they sort of got more conservative, and they weren't doing very many positive things. The drives went away, and they have not done anything since. And, and Coach Moore has looking on every bit of 57 <laughs> by now. Aging before our eyes. The holding call on Brad Leggett, who is the center replacing Joel Hilgenberg. Second and 12. Hebert has pressure up the middle, rolls away from it. Goes back to Finnerty. And he's to the 33-yard line. He'll pick up seven on the play. It'll be third down and five. Robinson makes the tackle. We talked about Hilgenberg's uncle and brothers. Well, Leggett's father is a coach in the league, Earl Leggett. You see Abear trying to find an open receiver. He's still looking downfield as he runs toward the sideline and finds Kennedy. Just a very good heads-up move by the quarterback, keeping his eyes downfield as he's scrambling, trying to find time. Third down and five. Seattle 24, New Orleans 20. 13.45, time remaining in the ballgame. Over the middle, an excellent reception by Eric Martin, who went up and pulled it down. They'll mark where he was down and contact was made, which is the 37-yard line. It'll be fourth down and one. I mentioned earlier that Eric Martin is like one of those basketball players with a rebound because even though he's in traffic, he's still able to go up and just muscle that ball away from the defender. A fine catch, but short of the first down. You watch him, he's in traffic. He's got a man right behind him. He still gets up high and comes up with the catch. Now his leg was down on the play. Deck by Robertson, holds on to the ball, fourth and one. Barnhart to catch. Charlie Jones and Mad Rashad. We have 12 minutes, 40 seconds, time remaining in the Superdome. Seattle out in front of New Orleans by four, 24-20. And the Seahawks with the ball at their own 19-yard line. Kane is in motion. And John L. Williams, the ball carrier, and he's out to the 25-yard line. So he picks up six. It'll be second down and four. James Williams with the tackle. This telecast is presented by Authority, the National Football League, intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or the use of this telecast without the express written consent of the New Orleans Saints and the National Football League is prohibited. This game is a property of the National Football League, Seattle Seahawks, and New Orleans Saints. All rights reserved. The Seahawks appear to have opened up their running game a little bit by throwing first, loosening up those linebackers and now coming back with a running attack. Second and four. Incomplete. Derek Finner, the intended receiver. It'll be third down and four. Brett Maxey has picked him up. It had to be just a throw away. You see Craig, 24-33. Two touchdowns and two interceptions the Saints with those two interceptions plus two fumble recoveries and one of the interceptions by Pat Swilling was for a touchdown and that was counteracted by Brian Davis of the Seahawks his interception for a touchdown third and four mark the reception past the 30 yard line and it will be a first down as he was hit immediately by Gene Atkins 
the Seattle Seahawks receivers do an excellent job, and I, I just can't say this enough, about at the end of the pattern, finishing it, coming back to the ball. That's where you get your separation from the defensive back and enable you to make that catch without anybody on you. The, all their receivers do that so well. And the point of the reception was the 32. That's where the ball is marked. First down. Clock moving now on the 11-minute mark. Time remaining. Blades 120. Two touchdowns. And double digits in reception. John L. battles his way past the 35 to the 36-yard line. And it'll be second down. Sam Mills makes it tackle. Uh, when you get in a fight, you got to make sure you're not surrounded by the other team's jersey. You've got to have some help. <laughs> some help somewhere. <laughs> now, meanwhile, on the sideline, you will see that Steve Walsh is loosening up, but Bobby Abair is also loosening up. And Abair has been throwing in between series when he is on the sideline. Walsh is number four, Abair is number three. Walsh, I'm sure, chomping at the bit, wanting to get into this game. And he felt like he had actually won the starting job in terms of statistics during the playoffs. But then Coach Moore making personal it. Personal foul on the offense, number 71, 15 yards penalty. Costly personal foul on Brian Millard. As we mentioned earlier, Coach Moore making the gut decision to go with Bobby Abair, even though Walsh had the more outstanding statistics during the preseason. Let's see what caused the penalty. Millard is number 71. Watch the left of your screen. And there's a the steering call. He gets Millard. So it's almost first and forever. And we've got flag. So the Seahawks now have started to sputter. This was Andy Heck, the left tackle. Full start, number 66 on the offense prior to the snap. The Seahawks going in the wrong direction. And letting control just begin to slip away. See Andy Heck the right side of your screen. Once again, the play is on four, he goes on one. The line of scrimmage is back at the 16-yard line. They'll have to go to the 42 for the first down. And again, we'll have fly. Here the ball starts, number 71 on the offense. The this is Millard. And they're back to the 11-yard line. They don't be careful. They're going to score for the Saints here in a minute. And once again, maybe it's a lot of this noise. It is a very noisy stadium affecting. And now it's even noisier. Jackson got it. He wasn't sliding. He was going for the yards. He got 10. Very gutsy run by David Craig. Can't find any receivers open. Cuts inside. Now you see Ricky Jackson just got ran out of the play, but he turns around and comes in and makes this stop here. Watch Ricky Jackson, 57, just nailed Craig. Just stayed alive and kept pursuing the play until he ended up uh, being a part of the tackle. And it's second and 21. Throws it over the middle to John L. He's after the 29-yard line. He gets eight. And it'll be third down. Troy Cook with the tackle. There is so much pressure on your offensive line in these situations. It's obviously that you've got to pass. The defensive line knows you got to pass. And they just pin their ears back. A lot of people say pin their ears back. They just rush hard at the quarterback. I don't know why. I heard that so many times. Just pin your ears back and go after that quarterback. Pinning your ears back it hurt. And Jeff Kemp is in a quarterback. Craig is hurt on the far side. They're looking at him at the 32-yard line. 
Kip with no opportunity to warm up. He dumps it off to John L. And he is dropped at the 34-yard line. That is not enough, and the Seahawks will be kicking Jackson with the tackle. And Craig appears that he... Is that when he got... You know, when he's running with the ball, they got him high and low. Did it separate his thumb? It looks like he might have taken, taken a shot right on that thumb, but he appears to be all right. Maybe just as he comes down, he could have jammed it into the ground. But he appears to be okay. He's laughing on the sideline. Rick Donnelly will be kicking. This buck is the return man, 725 and counting. Time remaining in the game. Pressure up the middle, he gets it away. From the 28 to the 32. Four yards on the return. We'll step aside for a moment. The Saints have the ball. The Seahawks have the lead. That's videotape of Dave Craig. He's running into the locker, but he's holding a cup in the, in the hand that hurts, and that's the, uh, the thumb in his throwing hand. Speaking of throwing, one of the great quarterbacks and the number one all-time favorite in the 25 years of the New Orleans Saints is this man, Archie Manning, and uh, on the cover of this magazine with his two youngsters. Had a chance to visit with Archie. He's also the broadcaster. Archie is also one of my favorite quarterbacks of all time. He is just a, you know, I remember when I first heard of him, the legend of Archie Manning from Ole Miss. But his sons, Cooper and Peyton, I used to play catch with those guys at the Pro Bowl. They were little teeny kids. Now they're, I'm looking up to both of them. Hebert comes out throwing for the Saints, and he has the first completion. To Floyd Turner, the report on Craig is that they are x-raying that thumb or the right hand, the throwing hand, in the locker room. Second down and four. 6.45, time remaining in the ball game. Seattle by four. High but pulled down by Eric Martin. Time and time again. He has reached up and held on and pulled it down in traffic. That's the, the big plus that you get when you can catch with your hands. You can reach up and grab balls without having to jump. It keeps your body control intact. Excellent hands by Eric Martin. James without a huddle now first down at the 50-yard line. Hebert hey, taking his time. And the pass is incomplete, and you look for a flag. There is no flag. Contact right on the borderline. Early the intended receiver and Harper had the cover. Awful close, but you get a chance to see the arm on Abar as he just drills this one into Quinn Early is not able to hang on to it. So good coverage. And good timing by Harper. It'll be second down and ten. The ball at the 50-yard line. The score, Seattle 24, New Orleans 20. Philadelphia still leads Green Bay now 13-3 there in the third. Dallas in front of Cleveland. Tampa Bay and the Jets are now tied in the fourth. And here at the score, Seattle 24, New Orleans 20. The Saints with four wide receivers. Third and 11. Hebert over the middle. It is complete to Martin. Robinson and Glasgow with the tackle. Martin is a tough man to handle. He's not real fast, but he runs excellent routes. And if the ball is anywhere in his vicinity, he comes up with the grab. You see Abair looking for Martin the entire time, coming across the middle, leads him perfectly. That's just an excellent pass. And Rufus Porter has been injured. He's at the 40. We've got a timeout. We'll be back in just a moment. 
With five minutes to go in the ball game, the decision of Jim Moore, the head coach, looms large. His decision, Bobby Abair is his quarterback. He trails by four. The ball club in the hands of Abair. He stumbles a bit as he comes back. He's going to run for it. To the 25. And they're cheering Bobby Abair. <laughs> now they cheer for him. And he runs like a running back. He changes the ball. He really does. He didn't go into that little uh, chicken quarterback slide. He, chicken stuck, quarterback he, stuck slide. That, he stuck that ball under his arm and ran. Puts it away from the pressure. That's the reason he goes to the left hand. Great block by Ironhead. Right at the end of that play, he just flattens them on. Greg is back. You can see also the plays that he carries on the sleeve. Broken right thumb is the report on Greg. Here's Finnerty. And this will be close to the first down. Let's see where they mark it. Wyman and Blackman make the tackle. They're going to bring the chains out. It's just shy of the 24. David Craig, that means if he can't go, Jeff Kemp will have to try to hold on to this lead. Jeff Kemp did not play a lot during the preseason. About three inches shy of the first down. Third and inches. And as I was mentioning about Jeff Kemp not playing so much during the preseason, they were trying to get a look at Dan McGuire. And Kelly Stopper. And so Kemp will, if he has to come in and play, he, he certainly has not had a lot of time to work on his quarterbacking abilities during the preseason. But he's pretty solid. They're down inches. Hey, Barrett just trying to wedge it out. And he'll pick it up. The Saints, have, the Saints have two goals in mind. The first one, obviously, is score a touchdown and take the lead. Their second goal, they would like to use as much time as possible in scoring the touchdown. They want, you know, they'd like to go to the two-minute mark and then get inside of it before they score the touchdown or before they go for the... I don't know, I'm not sure if they'd go for a field goal to pull within one, trailing by four. But they, they want to give Seattle as little time on the other side of the touchdown as possible if they're able to score. Right, and, and thinking that way, you got to score a touchdown, actually, if you're going to use up all the clock. Benedict gets the call. I am very confused as to why we are not seeing... Dalton Hilliard Dalton was trying Hilliard. to check on that. You know he had been bothered by that right knee, had it wrapped, may have re-injured it in the ball game. We're checking with the sideline of the Saints to see if that is the situation. Told me before the game that he felt okay. Everything felt fine. But you would think you would think that if he felt fine, he'd be in the football game at this point. But right now, he's standing on the sideline not far from Jim Moore. And the report we have back that he is feeling fine. And it is second down. Nine-yard line. First down, St. Floyd Turner makes the reception. Robinson and Hunter on the tackle. And a bear, just that's just that's a throw. That's a throw, throw. A lot of times quarterbacks get a little bit nervous about throwing that ball down there in the in the crowd when you're trying to drive down and getting scoring position. But he just drops back and fires it away to Turner. And now the two-minute warning will be given to both benches. The score: Seattle 24, Saints 20, and driving. We're back at the Superdome. It's first down and goal to go for the Saints. Into the right flat and down at the six, maybe the five, is Greg Scales. Robinson was there to cover him. They'll mark it just outside of the five, and it's second down, goal to go. Saints trailing by four.
incomplete. Perry wouldn't knock it away. Tice with a chance to put his team over the top, but wouldn't with a, with a fine play. And a change in a three tight end offense. And Abear just trying to drill it in there, but wouldn't. But a heads up play gets his hand in there and knocks the ball away because Tice was wide open. to kick off. 
Lavelle and Warren are the return men. They will down it in the end zone. Will bring it out to the 20-yard line. Time on the clock remains the same. Each week in all of our games, we're featuring the Cannon Camcorder replay of the game. And today, here is the Cannon Camcorder replay of the game. The touchdown from Abair to Turner. at a false start. The center was rocking. I'm not sure if they're going to call it our hammer. A false start. Number 65 on the offense prior to the snap. That's Edwin Bailey just to the left of the snapper. comes out to the 13. It's still first down goal to go. Still with 33 seconds. Kemp from the shotgun. Timing pattern in the corner. And it is caught but out of bounds. Reggie Jones with the defensive play. And Clark was just pinned against the sideline. Awful close call here because Clark arguing that he was forced out of bounds. Kemp putting the ball in an area where only Clark could catch it. Right at the end of this play, you'll see that he might have had 
he might have had a little. He might have had a little bit of an argument. Not a lot. Well, a little bit of an argument. That's the, that's the old receiver in me coming out. <laughs> Second down, goal to go. 29 seconds. Pass is complete now to the four-yard line. who is back in after sitting out of play. Buck with the tackle. It'll be third down goal to go. This was just a, a play to get the ball in the middle of the field. Kept firing over to Brian Blade. Hopefully if Brace can break the tackle, he may get a chance to get in the end zone. Here is number four, John Casey, the rookie taken in the fourth round of the draft. He beat out the nine-year veteran, Norm Johnson. And he will have to justify that decision shortly. Broken thumb on the throwing hand for Dave Craig. And we assume that's when he was running with the ball and he was at high and low came down with the ball underneath him and against a hard surface here the body weight the football going right into that thumb and breaking it and appeared to be jammed it on the ground third and goal pop but out of bounds it will be fourth down Craig is down <laughs> arguing on the call. And this was a fine call. He better get off. Craig better get off the field. Tommy came obviously way out of bounds. And as you just mentioned, he didn't get off the field and he got a penalty. And there was the flag drop. Craig had no business being down there. You're going to lose every every argument with the officials anyway. We have unsportsmanlike conduct on the Seattle bench after the play is over. The down comes 15 yard penalty. So Craig has made it more difficult for the rookie kicker. Rather than the line of scrimmage being the four, the kick from the 11 and an attempt of 21. This will be an attempt of 37. And what a way to get your spurs in the NFL. You got a chance to win a game the first time out. Everybody is there. <laughs> and this is very funny. New Orleans calls a timeout just like they do in basketball. They want to put the ice on this young kid. Let him think about it a little while. spot like this this is when you're really out on the island but this is what you're this is what you earn your your pay this is really you know what it comes down to a lot of people can kick with no pressure on them this is pressure and this is to tie and set up an overtime I guess the question that comes up now, 
would he have been able to make that kick if it was 15 yards closer? Thanks for being here.